Hello. Okay, let's talk about gate or gene key 24 that's transiting from April 29th to May 3rd. Um, this is a great opportunity for us. I love this, um, this gate. Um, I really like the Head and Ajna gates. It's probably because I have uh, the 4323 and the 1156. So I really appreciate the ability to um, receive wisdom from the divine, receive seeds um, of imagination, um, live in wonder. I love that. So <clears throat> gate 24 is in the Ajna and it connects to the head via gate 61. And this is in the individual circuitry of knowing. And when 24 and 61 are um, together, we have the channel of awareness or cosmic perspective. And it's this ability to see the big picture and the blessings um, when we are given the time and perspective. So the quantum human design name for gate 24 is the gate of blessings and in traditional human design it's the gate of rationalization and in the I Ching it's known as the returning and this is all about again once there's a waning um, a disintegration or a death there is always a return the tide will always go out and we'll always come back in and the daylight, the sun, will we'll start in the morning and we'll move to the night. Um, and it's also about returning to your right path. So in a way, kind of like course correcting, returning to your right direction and returning to the heart of who you are in, at a soul level. So the transit is highlighting this opportunity to find blessings and empowerment from the painful experiences you've had in your life and to use them as opportunities to transform, to alchemize. It's to learn to allow what you truly deserve, allowing what you deserve by knowing that you deserve whatever it is, because you are in your self-worth and self-value and to not rationalize it away, right? This is a very, this is a very rational, um, it can be a very rational place, right? And that's what traditional human design named it, right? Gate of rationalization. So not to use that rationalization to push away what the quantum field, what the universe wants to bless you with. So on the shadow side of uh, gate 24 is the refusal to transform, to not using um, your past experiences as transformational opportunities and to rationalize allowing yourself less than you deserve because, you know, whatever your rational brain tells you because um, you don't really need it, you're fine without it, other people don't have it, those types of stories, right? Um, and... The shadow also acts that rationalization and that refusal to transform acts as a protection to keep you stuck in the patterns that are no longer working. On the integrated side of this gate is all experience are potential for expansion. And it's this using this power to redefine the stories of your experiences and how you grew from them. And to find gratitude for everything you've experienced so that you can find liberation, liberation from your limiting stories. In my, um, when I was in counseling um, school, college, I, we did this project where we wrote our life story in the first year. Everything that we remembered from birth um, to by the time we left home. And that in itself is a very um, powerful experience because I had so many memories come back. Then in the second part of the year, we actually went through each event, each memory, 
And we looked at what was the limiting belief that came from that. Um, what did like what did we believe about ourselves? What emotions do we still feel about that limiting belief? And then we flipped it. What what from those coping mechanisms that were developed from that experience? What are the gifts in that for me? What do I now have as an amazing skill that came from something that maybe wasn't so pleasant? Sometimes some of our events were and our memories were pleasant, right? They were happy. But it's really flipping everything on its head and seeing something from a different perspective. So Richard Rudd calls this gene key silence or the and the ultimate addiction. So the shadow name for this gene key 24 is addiction. And it talks about how humanity is deeply attached to suffering. At some level, we um, were addicted to it. And what this is, is it's really about our attachment to or it's the, the neural networks that have been firing for however many decades in your mind that are very familiar and are running through your mind and your nervous system and your physical body all the time. I think of these like super highways, right? The firing mechanism just happens really quickly because these are deep grooves or deeply um, very well paved highways where things go very quickly. Um, and those synaptic patterns and neural networks, they are very conditioned in our way of being and they just fire very, very easily and effortlessly. My clients will often say to me, it's so hard to change. And it is and it's not. Once I explain this to them that the reason why change in ourselves and our perspectives and our actions feels challenging is because We've been practicing the way that we are um, until today, right? I've been doing the same thing in my life until today. And so if I suddenly say I want to do it differently and try and do it differently, well, those neural networks haven't been given a chance to, um, to, de to develop, right? To fire, to get used to that. It's like getting a muscle to work quickly when you haven't worked it out in a really long time. So we get the way that we are through repetition. So in order to change and change your stories, your beliefs, your um, coping mechanisms, um, your just ways of showing up in the world, you have to work through conscious repetition or devotional practice in order to change because the body and the mind need to catch up to this. There's also a part to play around like dopamine attachments and whatnot, but you can get different dopamine hits through different actions in your body. These addictions, these attachments can be to, as I was talking about, these ways of being, these beliefs. It can be to how you think about something. It can be an attachment to relationships, or it can be to substances like food, alcohol, drugs. And we see this playing out not only in as an individual, but it is also passed down to us through our genetics and ancestral trauma, through the physical body, the mental body, and I would add probably also through our past lives experience and just what our souls came here to um, experience in this lifetime. So Richard Rudd talks about this gap Change is possible when we experience a gap. And what happens is it's kind of like this, this, um, this break in the firing of these synapses where you get clarity. But what happens is that in order to gain that clarity, you need to be willing to be in and experience and feel that gap to be okay to be in this unknown, this new experience. And often we see this gap as a void or a spaciousness or a silence where things are just kind of unknown. And I've had a client um, call this liminality, to be in this liminal space. I love that word. And this will often happen after we have something that is 
um, where we're kind of jolted to look at life differently. And then we can feel this, um, we can feel what brought us to where we are, but we're not really sure where to go. And we kind of need to be in that gap to make that new choice. So this shadow of addiction can play out in one of two ways. Um, you can be frozen, where you refuse to look um, at what needs to change. You refuse to look at even the possibility of change. Um, this can also be seen as the frozen state in the nervous system or in lack of energy, depression, lethargy, or just being narrow-minded without any willingness to see a bigger picture. This also can play out through um, feeling anxious, anxiousness, which um, Anxiousness is, is an interesting experience because what I have found anxiousness to be is, is, is an unwillingness to be in the body and feel all of the feelings. And not unwillingness because you choose it, but unwillingness because um, you haven't been taught how to do that, right? We Most of us had just were we all come from family systems that have all experienced trauma in order to survive, right? And they've experienced amazing things too, but there's trauma in our system and our world is very much about don't look at your feelings. It's getting better for sure. But the anxious energy is an unwill is the inability to fully experience your feelings or to be okay in the unknown. And that can create panic in yourself. Um, and so in order to move through to the gift of invention, you need, you need nervous system support, right? This is a very, when we're thinking about our thought processes and our beliefs, even though it's in the head, it's like our nervous system goes from our cranial nerve at the back of the head in the um, vagus nerve all the way down our spine and wraps all the way around the front of our body, right? So it's it's very much you need to find ways to calm your nervous system. And I often bring this into these videos. But when the mind is thinking something, the body doesn't know the difference between it being a thought or reality. And so when we choose to be uncomfortable in the gap, when we decide, okay, I'm going to sit in my feelings, when we decide I don't want to be in this frozen state anymore, I want to try something different, the body's not going to know what to do with that. So the simplest way to calm the nervous system and the nervous system the nervous system is simple, right? It's a very simple thing. All it cares about is am I safe or not? And the only way you can communicate through the, with the nervous system is through the senses, through your sight, how, your, your, how you hear, your vocal cords, touch, and smell. So you can use something as simple as touching your body, touching your heart or your stomach, and taking some breaths. And of course, the breath tells the nervous system you're safe too, right? But this, you're using the somatics, your touch, to say to the nervous system, hey, there's not a saber-toothed tiger chasing me right now. And you're breathing, right? You can also listen to soothing music. So music that doesn't have lyrics, um, music that is soothing to you because the lyrics put thoughts in your mind, um, Solfeggio frequency or binaural beats are super helpful, as well as simply humming. So when we hum or ohm, that actually vibrates the vocal cords, which then vibrates the, the nerves of the vagus nerve that are around your throat and tells the, ner the vagus nerve, hey, if we're humming, there's not a saber-toothed tiger chasing you. So... I'm going to encourage you and invite you to remember that the state of the nervous system drives the story of the mind. So if your nervous system is supported and 
it, even if you don't calm down immediately, if your nervous system is supported, the mind will eventually follow. If your heart is calm, the mind will follow. Okay, so this is how you move into the gift of invention. And this is where invention and inspiration and magic happen when we can be in the unknown, when we can, <clears throat> excuse me, when we can pause and be in space, right? Because then we're open to possibility. We kind of go, ooh, what's actually possible here? What could happen here, right? It's that idea of wonder. So, and this is where we get to have new thoughts, new beliefs, and instead of reacting to just what is and what is familiar, we enter into this state of gratitude and into the not knowing. We enter into what, what Richard Rudd always calls contemplation, right? Where inspiration literally drops in like seeds. And this is where creativity occurs. So um, I get very excited about this. I love this um, idea. This to me is what makes life um, worth living, is living in a state of wonder and what is possible. So if you want to use this energy transit, watch your dream space. See what happens in your dreams. What types of messages? Set the intention before you go to sleep and ask, I want to have some inspiration. I want to feel inspired or I want to see the situation that I am, um, you might be struggling with differently. Practice sitting in silence for a minute. Close your eyes, put some solfeggio music on and just sit comfortably in silence for a minute or five minutes without any distraction. And notice, notice what comes through. Notice what your body feels like. Notice what thoughts come through, right? And watch what you use to distract yourself, bones, right? Looking at books, even if it's about learning, we distract ourselves from being in the gap. So um, my guides, I've been adding this piece in um, because I'm working with channeling information um, that comes beyond just what I find from, um, you know, what Richard Rudd says and then what comes through as I'm talking. Um, so I've been sharing this little bit at the end of these videos, what my guides say, which are the fae. And um, I pull a card from my uh, fairy card deck and then I just channel right around what comes through. And um, this puts me in a place of wonder. I love doing this. Um, it gets me out of my reasoning brain and lets me be at, in this place. So the fae that came through for this is um, there are these there are these beings that are kind of like they're they're kind of the epitome of fairy. It is this and it's not this. It is this and it's not this. And what they're here to share with us is that it's it. This is a, such a good time to practice to be okay with not knowing, to know to not know what way is up and what way is down. It's, it's an opportunity to see things from different angles and different perspectives, right? This is in the Ajna, and so when the Ajna is open, it has an ability to see a bigger perspective of uh, an idea. And when we see things from so many different angles, it can feel very confusing. It can feel uncertain. But... When you allow yourself to be in the uncertainty, you actually get to experience um, what wants to come through for you, what wants to be shown to you. When you're pushing and trying to make sense of something from a place of trying to force an understanding, um, you lose out on that alchemical uh, a way that things just appear out of nowhere where you get those epiphanies. And the Fae, they say, do you have any idea how much gold that is hidden in these places where we um, push through or struggle for certainty? There is so much wisdom that is lying there available to you if you allow it to be, if you allow yourself to sit in the uncertainty and allow yourself to turn your world upside down in a gentle way. 
It doesn't need to be chaotic. Just set the intention of ease and gentle. Gentle, ease, ease and flow. That used to be my mantra for the longest time. Anything I would do was ease and flow, ease and flow. So the more you resist seeing things from different angles, the more likely the universe will turn you on your head if you're meant to see it in a different way. So if you can allow yourself to be open to the wonder, to the possibility of invention, of imagination, and just ask yourself the question, I wonder, I wonder if it wasn't this. I wonder what, what life would be like. I, won I wonder if, you know, I don't know, I wonder if, if crystals really do are really, you know, beings. We used to do some shamanic journey work. I still, I still do. And we would often journey to the crystals to see what messages they have, to see what their, their, their um, beings are like, right? It's like you can't do that if you don't open to imagination, if you don't let yourself sit into the gap of I wonder. And this is part of our evolutionary path as humanity, to see beyond the certainty, to see what else is there, because there is so much richness beyond our imagination, right? If we just allow it to happen. So have fun with this transit, and I will see you soon.